economics, and prophecy. Over the last few years, as the American debt crisis has deepened, the language of economics has become a part of our daily lives. The word trillion, though we can scarcely comprehend its magnitude, trips off the lips of politicians and newscasters as if such a vast quantity of money were a mere pocket change. Most of us have no problem distinguishing the difference between America's gargantuan debt and its growing annual deficits, stimulus, inflation, quantitative easing, unemployment compensation, revenue enhancement, unfunded mandates, and other economic lingo do not seem quite as arcane as they may once have. Even so, the vast scope of the American economic disaster, which has affected many other nations due to their close ties to the United States, boggles the mind. It is not just that the federal debt is approaching $15 trillion, but that private debt, which includes mortgage debt, consumer debt, and credit card debt, exceeds federal debt, a whopping $16 trillion. Beyond that, American unfunded liability what the country ultimately owes to recipients of Social Security, Medicare, the prescription drug program, etc., is more than a staggering $115 trillion. This topped the world's gross domestic product by about $40 million. These numbers are too large to comprehend. They are easy to understand when we calculate the debt each American citizen would personally bear if it were divided out equally. Looking at it this way, every America's, American's portion of the federal debt is roughly $47,000. To this must be added his share of personal debt, which totals over $51,000. Finally, he must also bear his portion of the unfunded liabilities, a sum of $1,021,000. His total debt load, therefore, equals a crushing 1119000 Paying this off at 50000 per year, it would take each citizen over 22 years to reimburse, provided that no new debt were accrued. Debt is nothing new. Throughout history, governments have time and again outspent their treasuries. Many monarchs and countries have gone deeply into debt to finance wars of Congress and conquest and expansion. And it is not only wars that are expensive. Vast national building projects, palaces, temples, tombs, and even whole cities have been undertaken on loan from wealthy us usurers since the beginnings of finance, when taxation and plunder could not provide the means. Most of these nations, even whole empires, weakened and fell largely because of their vast debts. Not just the aristocracies of nations dabbled in, de dabbled in debt. Many an average citizen desires a certain property advancement, education, or some extravagance. Went into a real to fulfill his dreams. Others had little choice, plunging into debt after crop failure, business failure, war, drought, economic disaster, and sheer profligacy. Deadless often had to flee for their lives to find greener pastures elsewhere. Many nations imprison debtors often under atrocious living conditions. The Bible does not turn a blind eye to such cases, allowing Israelites to sell themselves into slavery for a time when the circumstances of life turn sour. If you buy Hebrew servant, he shall serve six years and in the seventh, he shall go out free and pay nothing. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go with him. 
If his master has given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. But if the servant plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with it all. And he shall serve him forever. And if a man sells his daughter to be a female slave, she shall not go out as the male slave do. If she does not please her master who has betrothed her to himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. He shall have no right to sell her to a foreign people since he has dealt deceitfully with her. And if he has betrothed her to his son, he shall deal with her according to the custom of daughters. If he takes another wife, he shall not diminish her food, her clothing, and her marriage rights. And if he does not do these three for her, then she shall go out free without paying money.